Okay, I've got baby pick open. You can find that in your chapter six folder. What we're gonna do with this picture is we're gonna practice our blending modes by colorizing this image. And you'll notice here in the swatches panel, I have some extra swatches here at the bottom. I've already created these for this lesson. To follow along, you'll need to load these swatches into your swatches panel. It's very easy to do. Just click on the little arrow on the top right of the swatches panel to open up the flyout menu. On that menu, click on load swatches and navigate to your Chapter 6 Project Files folder and select babypickswatches.aco. I've also created our selections for us to make the process go a little quicker since we are just focusing on blending modes in this section. Okay, let's make a new layer and let's start with the backdrop. So that's the area behind the baby's head. So I'm going to go to Select, Load Selection. In my channel drop-down menu, you will see that I have created selections for skin, the backdrop, the blanket, and the dress. So we're going to choose Backdrop. We're going to click OK. And you'll notice that the area behind the baby's head has been selected. I'm on a new layer. And I'm going to get the paint bucket. And I'm going to spill a color in there. And the color I want is over here in our swatches panel. And when we hover over the various colors, you'll notice that the name comes up. The colors we'll be using are at the bottom of the swatches panel after those dark browns. So we're going to look for the backdrop. The backdrop is a dark peach color. And what we may want to do for our swatches, and so that we don't have to hover to look for them, let's click on the swatches panel menu and let's choose large list. And we'll scroll towards the bottom. And here we can see the names of our colors. So we're going to choose backdrop and now it becomes our new foreground color and remember we've selected our paint bucket which can be found under the gradient tool and I'm going to spill that color into my selected area. I'm going to deselect my selection control D or command D and now I want to apply a blending mode so that the background color bleeds through and it becomes more real because right now it looks like I painted right on top of the picture and I can't even see the texture from the photo anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my layers panel. I'm going to select my blending mode menu and I'm going to choose soft light. And you can see how that added a pale pink behind the baby's head in the backdrop area. Okay, let's make another new layer. Let's name this one Blanket. This will be the area that the baby's leaning on. Let's go ahead and change our foreground color again. Let's select Blanket from the Swatches panel. We get this light turquoise color. We still have our paint bucket selected and we're going to load a selection, select, load selection, and we're going to choose Blanket. I'm going to click OK. I've got my new selection. I'm going to spill my paint bucket inside the selection. The whole area is colored that blue color. I'm going to deselect and now again I'm going to change my blending mode. In this case I'm going to change it to color burn. Now I've already gone through these ahead of time so you can very easily go through the different color modes to see the different effects and you may find one that you like better than the ones I've chosen. Okay so now we've got the backdrop and the blanket. Let's add a new layer. Let's go ahead and do the dress and we'll get the dress color which is yellow. Again we're changing the foreground color. We're going to do select, load selection, and let's select the dress and spill our paint inside the selected area. I'm going to go ahead and deselect and I'm going to change my blending mode to soft light. And you can see how the yellow has turned very pale. And again, this is working with the layers below it, but because my blanket is not in the same area as my dress or my background color in the backdrop area, the yellow is being combined with the original photo that I scanned in. It's not being combined with the other two colors because they're not actually laying on top of one another. Okay, let's go ahead and make a new layer. This time we're going to do the skin. So this is going to include the arms and the face. We're actually going to do the whole head because a lot of the skin color comes through in the hair. So we're going to select the skin color from our swatches panel again to change the foreground color. 
Let's go ahead and load selection. And we want to load the skin. And with my paint bucket, I'm going to spill into my selected area. Now you'll notice what happened was I have three different selected areas when it comes to the skin. I only had to spill in one section and it applied it to all the selected areas. Now you'll notice that this one's very dark and I can't see any of the features of the baby. So I'm going to change this one to soft light. And then you'll notice that the color becomes a little more pale, looks a little more natural, and again the original features are bleeding through because of the blend mode. Okay, now let's go ahead and work on some of the features on the face. We're going to go ahead and color the lips, the tongue, and the eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on the face so we get a better view. That's pretty good. I'm going to make a new layer. And let's go ahead and start with the mouth. So this will be the inside of the mouth. Now I don't have a selection for this one. We're just going to use our paintbrush tool. And we're going to select the color mouth in our swatches panel. And we're going to switch to the brush and I'm going to simply paint on the tongue. Now this is a very popular technique of coloring photos. You can also use this technique to do digital makeovers on photographs that are in color and add makeup to somebody. Okay, so we've got the tongue colored in, the inside of the mouth colored. Let's change our mode to soft light. And you'll notice now we can actually see the outline of the tongue. Now I went over a little bit there on the left hand side so I'm going to get my eraser tool and I'm going to bring the opacity down to about 50 percent. So when I'm erasing with my eraser tool it doesn't erase everything the first time I erase with it. So I can come along my edges and I can clean up my edges with my eraser tool and it won't take the entire color away. I would actually have to keep clicking and dragging over the same spot to remove the entire thing but this way it can help me clean up my edges. And ladies, if you've put makeup on, you know what I'm talking about. It's the same thing when you go back in, maybe with a Q-tip, and try to clean up some edges. You don't get rid of everything, you just try to soften it. Okay, so that's the mouth. Let's add a new layer. Let's go ahead and do the lips. Again, we have no selection for this one. We're just gonna use our paintbrush. Let's get our lip color. Make that our foreground color. Let's get our brush again. Now this one I may want to lower the size of my brush. Remember to change the size of the brush on the keyboard by clicking the left square bracket makes it smaller, the right square bracket makes it larger. And now I'm just going to paint on the lip. Now I don't have to be very careful, of course I want to be careful, but remember I can come back with that eraser that I've set to 50% to help clean up my edge. And my blending mode will also hide some of my imperfections. Now this one it might be a little more difficult to decide how far down the lip goes. And there we go. You know after we select our blending mode we may decide to come back in with our brush and add some more color. Okay with this one I found that the overlay blending mode, so clicking on normal and going down to overlay, seemed to give a pretty good effect. In addition, I want to change the opacity just a little bit. So I'm going to bring the opacity down with the slider to about 90, between 90 and 95 percent. Again I can call up my eraser, that's the letter E on your keyboard, and you'll notice that the opacity changed to the last setting that we set. And I can come in and again I can clean up the edges around where I have painted to make it look more natural and not make it look like I actually painted some lipstick on the baby. Okay, it looks like I might want to add a little bit of color over here in the corner. I'm going to go back to my brush and because I'm on the same layer, keep in mind that those settings that I have applied with my blending mode and with my opacity are now applying anytime I paint with this color. And you've also noticed that I've been creating a layer for each separate piece that I'm coloring. And that's because the blending mode that I select applies to everything on that layer. So I need to be careful and separate things onto their own layers so I have more flexibility in the blending mode that I choose and the opacity that I set. Because each color will behave differently with the blending modes. Okay, let's make another 
layer. This time, let's do the pupils. We'll do those first, and then we'll add the color on top of it. The pupils are black, so I'm going to reset my foreground and background color. I can do that by pressing the letter D on my keyboard, and you see that resets it and puts the black in front. I'm going to bring my brush up to the area my pupil is in, and I'm going to resize the brush by clicking, again, the bracket on my keyboard and get it to be approximately the size of that pupil. I then want to change my blending mode to soft light, just to bring down that black just a little bit. There we go. Okay, let's add another layer. And now we will do eye color. And I'm going to choose the eye color swatch. That changes my foreground color again. And I'm doing this color because this is actually my baby picture and I know my eyes are brown. So I'm actually trying to use a real color and not make my eyes blue or green because I was actually born with brown eyes. So I'm going to resize this. Now remember I can come back with my eraser. So I'm going to resize this to the size of the iris on my eye. There we go. And remember we've got the black bleeding through now because it's right below our eye color and of course the original image. Let's change this to overlay. And I'm going to reduce the opacity to 60%. Now you can click in the percentage and type it in or you can grab the slider and bring it down by clicking the slider. And now you'll see the brown eyes look a little bit more natural. And some of that extra that we actually had going outside the area of the eye into the lid has already disappeared when we changed to overlay. But to clean it up a little more I'm going to get my eraser letter E on my keyboard and I'm going to go around the eyelid and get rid of the brown from the iris that I created. Okay, one last thing I think we should add to this is that little sparkle in the eye. Because the color of that brown that we put on top of the iris, the light color that was sparkling in the eye has kind of been made dingy and has been lost a little bit. So let's make one more layer. Let's name this one Sparkle. And we just need the white color. White's already there, it's our background color. So I'm just gonna press my letter X on my keyboard that swaps the foreground and the background color. I'm gonna get my brush tool and I want this a lot smaller. And I'm just gonna draw a little line to create that little sparkle that we can slightly see. And then I'm going to reduce my opacity. I'm not going to change the blending mode. I'm going to keep that normal. And I'm just going to bring the opacity down to about 85%. And let me double click on the hand to fit this in the window. And there's our colorized baby. And this gave us the opportunity to work with blending modes and see how they can actually affect color.